watch anything good on Netflix lately? Oh, I think I know what you're gonna say, Michael. The Anne Baby Hathaway rom-com based on Harry Styles fan fiction. Baby Reindeer. Baby Reindeer. I was, yeah. I was gonna say, baby. No, I was, I was. It was yeah. the next thing I was gonna say. Today we're gonna be talking about the hit show that everyone is talking about, except Ugo, I guess. Baby Reindeer. Listen, I have a wide range of tastes. I, I have many options are available. We're also gonna be talking about something Baby Reindeer brings up, and that is the law behind stalking. Ooh. So what is this show that sounds like an adorable kid's Christmas movie, but is actually a dark and terrifying story of stalking and abuse? What is it, Hugo? Well, <laughs> Michael, that's a great question. <laughs> Baby Reindeer is a dark drama thriller series based on true life events that happened to show creator and comedian Richard Gadd. Richard Gadd plays himself, his character named Donnie, a bartender and comedian living in London. Donnie meets a woman named Martha, who he feels sorry for when she comes into his bar with no money. He gives her a free cup of tea. Martha then develops an obsession with Donnie and proceeds to relentlessly stalk and harass him. Eventually, after several months of back and forth with the police, Martha is finally arrested, charged with stalking, and sentenced to nine months in prison. Well, let's talk about Martha's stalking behavior. Martha's methods of stalking Donnie included showing up to the bar every day, following him home, showing up wherever he was, kind of like Ugo, sending countless <laughs> emails, letters, phone calls, voicemails, Facebook messages, and even doing the same to his parents. Well, see, the only person that's guilty of stalking was Martha, because at one point she even sat on a bus stop bench outside of Donnie's home and monitored him every single day as he went in and out of his house. She also created a fake identity to get invited into his home by his unsuspecting housemate. The character Martha is clearly suffering from severe mental illness and is portrayed in a way where Donnie and the audience both empathize for her and what she's going through instead of just seeing her as the evil villain that she is. The evil stalker, right? True. Her character and stalking behaviors and motivations are all very complex, just like the actual laws around stalking. So let's break down stalking laws. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it, Mike, because this is actually a really interesting thing that most people don't understand the complexities of. You see, on the show, Donnie hesitates to report his stalker. And once he finally does, he's met with a lot of frustrating hesitation from the police. Let's first talk about what constitutes stalking. The legal definition of stalking varies by state and jurisdiction but the general definition is a course of conduct directed at a specific person that would cause a reasonable person to fear for their safety or suffer substantial emotional distress. Yeah, you see, unlike other crimes that involve a single incident, stalking is defined by an ongoing pattern of behavior. Sometimes the individual acts that make up this behavior can seem harmless on their own, but when considered in the context of stalking, it may actually constitute a criminal act. Yeah, stalking is legally a crime in all 50 states. Stalking can include a wide range of threatening behaviors like repeated phone calls, texts, emails, following and showing up wherever a person is, sending them unwanted gifts, cyber stalking, and even threatening to hurt someone. It is true what you said, Mike, that even sending someone a gift could still be deemed stalking if it's done in a way that's meant to harass that individual. You see, if someone feels like any of the above definitions of stalking has been reached, then the police should get involved immediately. If that person has been directly threatened with violence or feels some sort of fear based on the context of collective stalking behaviors, the police should be able to take action. The truth of the matter though is that it is not always easy to get the police to take action and a lot of times they only take action once it's reached such a level that it can almost be too late, unfortunately. But the best way you can do this is to start building a case and start keeping the evidence of someone who's harassing you so that you can at least hope that the police get involved. Yeah, Mike, you're absolutely right. Evidence is absolutely key key when it comes to any type of stalking claim. A lot of it is gonna be he said, she said, and the fact is if you're able to document and record what is happening, if someone's showing up at your work, record it. If there are other witnesses, record it because it's that culmination of evidence that can lead to charges for stalking. Now, obviously this is a true story and I think maybe part of what the police's hesitation was 
is that, number one, it took him a long time to report the incident, yeah. but also this is a woman stalking a man. We see that stalking can be by any gender and it can happen to anyone, but I think maybe that may have played a role in why the police didn't take it so seriously until they finally looked up who she was and right. saw that she had a serious criminal record for stalking. I mean, what do you think? Why do you think the police hesitated for Yeah, there, there may have been some of that. Uh, there may have also been just the issue of, of, like you said, he showed up too late or showed up too late to actually report things, which led to you know some questionability there. Also, uh, conflicting reports, obviously. Mm -hmm. he, he was interacting with the person. And that is and that, the issue. That, is, that creates an issue because then the, the police can start thinking that this isn't someone you're fully ignoring and, exactly. you're, and you're kind of involved in something with them and then they don't want to get involved with that as much. Exactly, exactly. So, so speaking of evidence, so let's talk about how you can build your case if you are dealing with someone who's stalking or, or how Donnie could have built his case sooner and better. In order to be able to prove what's happening, a victim of stalking should keep detailed records or logs of every interaction and communication. To be able to show direct evidence and timelines of the stalking behavior to the police, you need that evidence. Every single instance, you wanna present them with it because again, the more instances, the more likely that they're gonna deem this stalking and get involved. You're absolutely right. And that's why it's essential to keep all the emails, the messages, voicemails, letters, the gifts, or any other type of evidence in order to be able to establish not only the frequency of the communication, but also the nature of the stalking behavior. Also, stalking victims should call the police whenever they feel like they might be in imminent danger. That is one time actually that the cops will show up immediately. Cops are, are less likely to get involved unless the evidence gets really high, but if the person shows up at your door yes. or shows up with, with a weapon or something, mm -hmm. the cops will, will intervene quickly because right then and there, there's an immediate need for the police to show up because there's an immediate danger. Yeah. So cops are more likely to show up when there's an immediate danger. It takes a little more work to build the case when you're just dealing with someone who is uh, harassing you electronically. Now, depending on the situation, you might be able to obtain a protective order or a restraining order. And that could either be done civilly where you file something so that you get a civil restraint or it could be done by a judge because there are criminal charges pending against the person. Either way, this is why you want to build your case, whether you're building it with the police or building it in court. And just like you were saying, Mike, if you do go the criminal routes, your stalker could actually face potential criminal charges and even imprisonment because guys, this is a crime. Let's talk about some real life examples and how they compare to baby reindeer. You see, stalking could range from vaguely frightening to violent and life-threatening. So Mike, how does the stalking that we see in the show Baby Reindeer compare to some other real life stories of stalking? One group of people that deal with stalkers quite often are celebrities. Celebrities. Yes, the dark side of fame. Everyone loving you is sometimes people loving you too much. Yeah, I hate when I get too much love. One person who definitely got too much love, Taylor Swift. You see, Taylor's had several stalkers over the years, but a few years ago, one of them was actually arrested after being caught outside of her New York City apartment where he was trying to break in. He was sentenced to 30 months in prison for stalking as well as threatening to kill my girl. Taylor Swift. Another of Taylor's stalkers drove from Colorado to her home in Beverly Hills, showing up masked with a knife. Now, Taylor has filed a restraining order against him and has said that she now travels with army grade bandages for gunshot or stab wounds, just in case. Now that would be some bad blood. Kira Knightley is another celebrity that had to deal with a stalker. You see, her stalker would frequently visit her London home, draw arrows in chalk, pointing to her door and actually meow. Yes, me out at her through her mailbox slot. What? Once he even left her a USB with his cat-themed music on it. She filed a permanent restraining order, which her stalker then violated by continuing to attempt to contact her and sending her threatening tweets and ended up being sentenced to a psychiatric hospital. You know, I would be curious to hear the cat-themed music he made. I am curious, like what is cat-themed? Is it like meow, 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 meow. Kind of like meow mix or something? Meow, 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 meow. All right, enough of that. Let's go on to Robert Pattinson. Now, Robert Pattinson turned a potential stalking situation on its head, somewhat similar to what Donnie and Baby Reindeer attempted to do at times. Wow, see, while filming a movie in Spain, he said a woman would stand outside of his apartment every single day for weeks. But instead of being threatened, he went ahead and took her on a date because he was bored 
and lonely. Wow. Now, get this, Robert took her out to dinner and said that he complained about everything in his life and after that she never came back. <laughs> she must have been so upset after hearing <laughs> how boring his life was. He might be brilliant for realizing that the one way to combat stalking is just to show the person that you actually kind of suck. <laughs> well, let's hope Richard Gadd hasn't invited any more future stalkers into his life. Now that he's also become somewhat of a celebrity from having a massive Netflix hit. But if he does get any more stalkers from his newfound celebridom, at least he knows how to handle it. By making a Netflix show police. about it. Oh, uh, yeah, that. Or both! Yeah.